Today we want to look more at the law of sines, which says that the ratio of the sine of an angle to the side opposite that angle is constant in any triangle. Sine alpha over A equals sine beta over B equals sine gamma over C. Alternatively, we put the si sides on top. So A over sine alpha equals B over sine beta equals C over sine gamma. We want to use the law of sines to solve triangles. That's what we're going to use it for. We're going to use the law of sines for triangulation, solving triangles. Uh, specifically, we want to look at the ambiguous case, mainly because it's kind of cool with the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case is when I give you information about a triangle that consists of two sides and the angle opposite one of those sides. Two sides and the angle opposite one of those sides. So for example, if I gave you as three parts, alpha, A, and C. So there's one set, uh, one fraction that we can make, A and alpha, B and beta, C and gamma. If I have one fraction that we can make and only one angle, then we're in the ambiguous case of the law of sum. The ambiguous case is the ambiguous case because it could, the given information could result in zero, one, two, or one triangle. That's what makes this case ambiguous. Could result in zero, one, two, or one triangles. I say one twice because the first one that I list is a right triangle, one right triangle, and the one at the end, that's one obtuse triangle. But it could, it could result in zero, one, two, or one triangles. I can give you a set of information for which no triangle exists that describes no triangle. So let's suppose that, let's take as our given information, I need a set of opposite information. Let's take alpha, A, and C. That's a, uh, an ambiguous case. I can translate this to B, to B and beta and A or C, or C and gamma and A or B. I need one frac one complete fraction of the law of sine. I need a set of opposite information, an angle and the side opposite that angle, and then one of the other sides. That's ambiguous case. The parts that, as I named before, uh, alpha is going to be the given angle, and A is the side opposite the given angle. And I abbreviate that S-O-G-A, the SOGA. Because I don't want to write side opposite given angle so much. I'm going to refer to C as the other given side. The other, oops, I spelled O wrong. Other given side. Almost did it again. And heck, since we're handing out abbreviations, this will be the given angle. Number of triangles will be determined by the side opposite the given angle. All right. Let's talk about the different cases. 
and let's see what uh, what we can do to figure out which case we're going to be in in the ambiguous case and why we don't care which case it is going into the calculation because the numbers will tell us that. So uh, if you recall, uh, the side opposite the given angle has a minimum distance. I got to be able to cover the distance from the end of side C and I got to be able to make a triangle. So there's a minimum distance for the side opposite the given angle. The side opposite the given angle has a minimum distance or minimum value it has to cover. So if I have a given angle, here's our other given side and here's our given angle. There's a minimum distance that I need to cover between the end of the other given side and the line where the third side goes. There's a minimum distance that A has to cover. So here's alpha, there's a minimum value of A. The shortest distance from the end of C to the line where B goes will make a right angle. And this is the minimum distance for A. The minimum length of A will be the height of the triangle, the distance from the end of the uh, of C down to the line where B goes. Notice that this minimum height is opposite angle alpha, the given angle. And if we're making a right triangle, that means C is going to be the hypotenuse. That's why I pick C to be the other given side. And so since we're making a right triangle, and this, is, this minimum height is the side opposite the angle alpha, that minimum length is the other given side times the sine of the given angle. So if we take the other given side times the sine of the given angle, that will give us a minimum value for the length of A. If A is less than that length, then we get no sign. Let's look at an example. Let's set alpha to be 30 degrees. Let's say C is equal to 10. and A is equal to four. So A is the side opposite the given angle, C is the other given side, and alpha is the given angle. We can calculate the height of the triangle, and uh, we can calculate the height of the triangle. It is going to be the other given side times the sine of the given angle. I pick 30 degrees because the side of 30 is equal to a half and I don't have to grab a calculator and 10 times a half is five. This is the minimum value of A to get any triangle at all. So once we calculate the height, we can see that since A is less than the height of the triangle, there is no triangle. A is too short to make a triangle.
A is too short to make a triangle. If I make a 30 degree angle, The shortest distance from the end of the hypotenuse down to where the third side is going to be is five. A is only four. A is too short to cover that distance. Four is less than the height of the triangle. It's too short. So if I attach a four to the end of the ten, it just kind of dangles there. And it can't reach the third side, making no triangle. The signal that the referee will give for no triangle is to make a triangle with their hands and shake their head. So the ruling on the field would be like, oh, that's like no triangle. They wear a microphone now in that in, in the trigonometry game. They wear a microphone, but they still do the hand signals like an American football. So it would be like, oh, the ruling on the field is that A, the side opposite to give an angle is shorter than the height. Ruling is no triangle. So they still do the mining part, even though they have, they're going over the loudspeaker. Do they still do that in football? I've watched football games a lot. Do they still do the dance when they make the call? Are they called pass interference? And do they, do they still do the dance like boring style? Are they still just like all pass interference? Would be like all boring as fuck instead of like all pass interference? I'm doing some kind of dance. I can't dance, so I can't do it, but like hire some people that can dance. Isn't that what TikTok is for? Obviously. But anyway. Never mind the fact that the, sig the signal that they use is just kind of boring. I was watching like Australian foot rules football or something like that, or maybe it was broken. I don't know. It was some different game in some foreign country. And then something happened in the game, and the ref, who by the way was wearing a hat, not like a hat. Right, not like a casual hat. It was like a fucking hat, like a full-on fedora-style hat. He had a jacket on. He was a rep. And something happened, and he went like this. Like, what the hell is that? When they do the replay, and like something happened, and he went. Well, that is my pillow. Why don't we have that? It was like a whole thing. I know you can't see what it was at home, but we watched some Australian rules football. See if you saw it there. Anyway, that's all beside the point. In this case, no triangle. Your ref can have coffee in there. Trigonometry. You spin off your run around. Fucking trigonometry is really stuff. Not exactly an athletic pursuit. But at this point, you're thinking, dude, what if we don't notice this right away? What if we mess up? We don't recognize, we forget to calculate the height of the triangle. And we try to find some, try to solve the triangle. No worries. What if we don't notice? What if we don't notice that there's no triangle? No worries, the numbers will remind us. So what will happen is we will try to use the law of signs and the law of signs will fail. 
the calculator will give us an error. So what will happen is we'll set sine of 30 over 4 is equal to sine of gamma over 10. That's the only ratio that we can set up in the law of sines or the law of cosines, because we only have these three pieces of information. This is the only ratio that we can set up that will give us some progress. And in this case, gamma, we'll try to calculate gamma as the sine inverse of 10 times the sine of 30 divided by four. So we've done practice with our ratios. We're all good at solving ratios, even throwing in, even throwing in an extra trig, inverse trig function in our ratio solving. And we type in our calculating machine. First of all, let's make sure we're in degree mode. And then we do the sine inverse of 10 times the sine of 30, close the sign, divided by four. And our calculator tells us that there is a problem. It says error domain. The reason that this happened is that you're trying to calculate the sine inverse of something that's bigger than one, but no angle has a sine that is greater than one. The side opposite cannot be bigger than the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse has to be the biggest angle. So, oops. if we just look at the ratio 10 sine 30 divided by four, that is 1.25, that is more than one, and no angle can have a sign that is greater than one. So this ratio, this note fraction right here, but no angle can have a sign greater than one. There is no angle with a sine greater than one. If the side opposite an angle cannot be greater than the hypotenuse. And notice that the reason that this ratio is bigger than one is that 10 times the sine of 30, that's the minimum value for the height and the denominator is less than that. So the denominator is too small. Any questions? How's everybody okay? So we can determine the number of triangles by looking at the height of the triangle. If we don't, then the numbers will tell us what's going on. side opposite the given angle is, is less than the height, then we get no triangle. Here's the case where the side opposite the given angle 
is greater than the height, but less than the other given side. If the side opposite the given angle is greater than the height, but less than the other given side, that will result in two triangles. In this case, the height of the triangle is the same. Calculate the height by taking the other given side and multiplying by the sine of the given angle. And that's still five because I'm using the same stuff. What we notice is that A, the side opposite the given angle, is greater than five, the height, but less than the other given side, which is still 10. So we're gonna find two triangles. Here's what it looks like. So here's the given information. I've got an angle of 30 degrees. I've got that uh, side adjacent to the given angle of 10. And that five is the minimum distance for the side opposite the given angle. Now in this case, since the side opposite the given angle is six, there are two ways that I can put a six in there. I can fit a six on this side. or I could put a six on the other side. So there are two places we could put a six. So there are two places that we can put a six on either side of the minimum distance of five. So let's figure out how we can do that. So let's set up a sign of 30 over six is equal to sine of gamma over 10. When we solve this for sine of gamma, we get sine of gamma is 10 times the sine of 30 divided by six. And that's 0.833 repeated. So 0.83 repeated. When we find the sine inverse, that'll give us a reference angle, but we can fit a reference angle. Uh, if our reference angle is small enough, we can fit add two angles inside of 180. We can get the first quadrant and the second quadrant angle into a triangle. So when we do a sine inverse, we get a 56.4 degree angle, but we can put that in quadrant one and quadrant two. 
there are two angles that are less than 180 that have this description, sine of alpha is equal to 83 degrees, or 0.83, excuse me. So gamma, Is fifty is sine inverse of fifty six oh. sine inverse of point eight three, which gives us fifty six point four degrees. But this we need to put in quadrant one and quadrant two. There are two angles that have a sine of 0 0.83. This is a reference angle, but we can put this in quadrant one and quadrant two. So 123 might also fit into a triangle. Now we've split the, the problem splits in two. Two different values of gamma, one for quadrant one and one for quadrant two. On the picture that we've drawn here, this gamma is 56.4 degrees, and this other gamma is a 123.6 degrees. These problems became a lot simpler now that the MCU has gone into the multiverse phase. So we understand that there are multiverses. So this is just like the two different versions. It was much more difficult back when the only reference we really had was the that, the Jackie Chan movie. No, it wasn't Jackie Chan. Who was that movie in one where that was you started like traveling around different alternate universes and like murdering? himself and other and other multiverses so that he could become more powerful. That'd be like when I went to like a different multiverse, a different universe, and killed the other professor leech so I could become more powerful. I'm just kidding, I didn't do that. Once. I did it like five or six times. I got kind of bored. I became harder and harder to track down. Like Jet Li, it was a Jet Li movie, that's what it was. Has anybody seen that movie? That's what made Law of Signs so much more difficult before the MCU and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So it's like, oh, now I get it. And meanwhile, Jet Li's like, oh, fuckers, it was the same thing. Only with more fighting and less going like this. You know what I mean? And my real question is, did the actors feel ridiculous when they were on screen without were like doing the acting and they didn't have the special effects? They were just kind of like all. Oh. And we're like, oh, Benedict, you're not making a circle. And could they fix it in post? It feels kind of like elliptical. It feels like a little wide. Do you know what I mean? It feels like in the wrong side. Anyway. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. What happens in this case, we have found that there are two triangles, and now I have two different realities where I have a 30 degree angle and a 56 degree angle, and I also have another reality which is a 30 degree angle and a 123.6 degree angle. So I have an alpha of 30, a gamma one of 56.4. So I have another, our other angle beta, beta one will be 180 minus 30 minus 56.4. Six, 
in one reality, beta is a 93.6 degree angle. In another reality, we're subtracting 123.6. In the other reality, beta is a 26.4 degree angle. Now for each of these betas, we've got to solve for two different values of B. For each different value of beta, we'll have a different value of B. So in this first reality over here, B will be six times the sine of 93.6 divided by the sine of 30. Eleven point nine, we'll call it twelve point zero. Then in this reality, we have a different value of b. B is equal to six times the sine of twenty six point four divided by the sine of thirty. So I just got to change that ninety three point six to a twenty six point four. Now we can see that up on our triangle up here with that 123.6 degree angle, we've got the short value of B of 5.3. So we're gonna have the short 5.3, but with that 56.4 degree out, uh, gamma, then we've got a very long B of 12.0. So it fits our description. Can you How's everybody okay? So instead of becoming the original concept for the movie one, instead of like going around and murdering the copies of himself to become like a better fighter and more powerful, it was just to pass a math class, right? It's like, well, I'd be better at math if I could eliminate all the other copies of me, all the multiverses. And so that's why he built the machine to travel to all the different multiverses so he'd get better at math. Then he realized by building the machine, he got better at math and he was pretty good at math all along. And that was the lesson. I was like, well, now let's have some fighting in it. And so they changed it. I'm sure you would have heard of it if it was still math focused. Any questions? Comments? Slide them Questions about the law of science, not about apparently obscure Jet Li movies. I have to say my favorite Jet Li scene is, fight scene is in a different movie entirely. I don't know what the movie was called. I just seen the fight scenes from him. He was fighting this big dude and he went to punch the guy in the head. So Jet Li is about to punch someone in the head. And this person, this, this guy he was fighting, his reaction was head butt to the fist. I'm like, oh, that's just getting punched in the head with more effort. How is that supposed to work? Well, literally in slow motion, Jet Li is about to like throw in a punch. And the guy's like, oh, oh, I'm gonna get punched in the head. No, nah. and he headbutts Jet Li's fist. It's like, oh, that's just gonna make getting punched in the head worse. How did that work? But it worked. 
his jet Li went flying back, was going, ow. You know what I mean? Like, how is that supposed to work? Then I wanted to test it out. Call my friend over. Hey, I'm going to punch you in the head, but instead I want you to reverse that by headbutting me in the fist. And they said no. So I guess that just means my friends were smarter than I thought. Let's talk about the third case, actually, the fourth case, where the side opposite the given angle is just greater than the other given side. That's the one that we've left out. But let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about the when the side opposite the given angle is greater than the other given side and that it results in just one triangle. All right, let's pause the video here, take a break, come back and do that last case. <laughs> 